um, the, the nutrition scientist, I guess, in me, thought, okay, uh, food, health. Oh, okay, we're talking about diet-related disease. So we're talking about obesity and heart disease and you know, cancers and uh, hypertension and those sorts of things. Um, and, and I guess, you know, from a nutrition science point of view and a nutrition epi epidemiology point of view, we can map the prevalence of those and the incidence and we can look at, you know, the um, economic impacts of uh, disease on our uh, health system. We can uh, look at the dietary um, connections. So we know that, you know, saturated fat can increase our risk of heart disease, etc., etc. But I guess, um, uh, oh, and, and, and I guess by knowing those things, we can, you know, create things like dietary guidelines, which, if you haven't already heard, um, were released, uh, you know, a set of dietary guidelines were released about a month ago. Um, and, um, and they told us to do, you know, as consumers told us to do things like reduce our um, uh, uh, intake of foods with added sugars and added salt and those sorts of things. But... Um, I guess that's a very simplistic way of looking at what the health impacts are uh, of an unfair food system and, um, and, and really only deals with one aspect. So it deals with the sort of, you know, the, the, the end product. And obviously part of the reason that we eat is to be healthy, um, but it's only one of the reasons that we eat. And, and it's also we, we make choices in, in an environment, basically, and that environment will also influence the choices that we make. Um, so I thought we would just look um, at, at, you know, taking my nutrition science hat off and putting my public health nutrition hat on, um, look at the way that, um, from a public health perspective, how we will view the food system. So, the next slide uh, shows, um, right in the middle there is obesity, okay? So uh, if I was just uh, taking the nutrition science point of view, I'd be saying, oh, it's all about energy in and energy out, and we've just got to get people to eat less calories and you know, um, uh, do more physical activity, and that's all we have to worry about. But in fact, no, there are lots and lots and lots of complex um, issues uh, that we have to deal with if we're going to deal with uh, the, you know, the, the obesity ep epidemic that we have. Could I have the next slide, please? This one is really just a simplified version of the other, um, and, it's, and it sort of talks about different spheres that are related to, uh, the, you know, the creation of obesity. And I guess, uh, can you just hit the button? The bits that I'm really interested in are the food production and food consumption um, components. Obviously, there are a whole lot of other social and individual and cultural um, aspects. But I, I suppose um, from, from tonight's perspective and, you know, what we are interested in, uh, looking at the food production and food consumption um, side is uh, probably more important. And I guess um, what I see as uh, the, you know, a major contributor to something like obesity is um, our food system and our sick food system and our food system that encourages the consumption of you know, a whole range of foods, be it on the basis of their flavour, their taste, you know, their convenience, uh, their um, uh, price, um, all of those sorts of things. And, and in fact, you know, it's a pervading kind of culture that, uh, the, you know, the, the general um, population is uh, sort of um, um, surrounded by. And so it's no wonder there are, you know, that they make those sorts of choices. Um, I th yeah, I might move on. So, um, given that I've got... Oh, my God! I haven't even halfway finished. All right. Um, uh, so at Vic Health, what we what we try to do is si simplify all of that by saying we're interested in food supply, we're interested in food access, and we're interested in the culture around food, and the environmental culture right, is what I'm talking about. Um, and so uh, one of the things that I wanted to um, let you know about, uh, which is a program that we uh, are just about to launch, we're not actually launching it yet, but I wanted to give you um, the heads up. Next one. Uh, next one. Sorry. Is the Seed Challenge. So um, we're working with um, the, uh, the Australian Centre for Social Innovation um, and we're basically uh, wanting to answer this question. So how do we improve fruit and veg supply and access and develop a culture around healthy eating, particularly in relation to fruit and veg, um, for Victoria? 
and we'll be inviting, once we launch this, you'll uh, certainly, please take a card. Uh, it has the details in terms of where you can register for um, uh, you know, further information. Um, and we'll be inviting ideas from a whole, you know, gamut of, of groups. Uh, in the past, Vic Health has, you know, mainly given funding to groups like academics, um, you know, and, and some of the, the sort of key people in the, in the nutrition and the food um, sort of supply uh, system. Uh, but we are really wanting to open this up uh, to all sorts of people, um, you know, all, your, all yourselves included. Um, and we're looking for real innovation in the food supply and we're wanting to fund um, and support innovation in the food supply um, and particularly looking at social innovation as a, a, an outcome, basically, so that it will have some sort of social benefit. Um, I won't go into the next one because I'm already over time, but I was going to show you one of the examples, but if you just want to make a note, if you Google um, baby carrots on YouTube, you can see one of the things that um, I'm talking about um, as, one, as a potential. So it's about creating um, a, a, a market for carrots that would have been wasted um, and creating them so that they're very um, easy to access. They're in a package. They, you know, they, they basically mean that people can access them really quickly. You can put them into lunch boxes. You can sell them at school canteens, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so it's that, you know, I just wanted to give you that example. And I guess, um, in the end, the health outcomes of the, the, um, the you know, the, the food and, and, and the, well, the food system are really um, secondary to the environmental um, outcomes that we're, we're all looking for. Um, and I just wanted to finish on my last slide, which is basic, and um, uh, apologies to the Greens, um, that, you know, there's no obesity on a dead planet. So unless we... <laughs> Unless we look after the planet and unless we make sure that we've got a planet to keep going, um, we won't have to worry about the health consequences. You know, there won't be any obesity, there won't be any heart disease. So I think, you know, that, that brings it back to me to say that, yes, while as a nutritionist I might be interested in, that, in the health consequences, I'm really interested in making sure we're still here into the future. Thank you. Thank you.